Hey guys, welcome to my Etsy channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another episode of Etsy Shop Critique. Today I will be doing a critique on the store called Willow LN Creations. And the store owner is Jenny. So thank you, Jenny, for allowing me to do a review of your shop. If this is your first time visiting my Etsy channel, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. I upload weekly videos about Etsy and how to build a thriving online business. And don't forget to follow me also on Instagram to stay updated with my regular YouTube videos as well as blog posts that I put on my actual blog. So let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. So what I normally do is I pick a listing and I do an audit on that particular listing. And any tools and recommendations that I talk about on this video, you guys could find it below this video. There's a text box. If you click there, you'll find a list of resources um, that you could use for your Etsy shop. Um, and the tool that I'm using today to do an audit on this particular listing is called Etsy Rank, also known as E-Rank. And this is a free tool for Etsy sellers. Um, you're able to plug in your shop. You need to have a shop first. You're able to plug in your shop and research keywords. You're able to look at your competitors. You're able to check the status of your store, where you rank. So it's a really, really nice feature that I, or a really nice tool that I recommend that you sign up for, especially if you're new at selling on Etsy. So the listing that I picked today to do a audit um, is this one right here. So the first thing I want to talk about is product photography or presentation of your products. And it's really, really important not only to sell a, a high quality product, but it's also very important that your presentation of the product, the way that you're showcasing whatever you're selling is amazing. It, I don't want to say this, but almost like your presentation has to be better than your product. Obviously, you want a high quality product that you're selling but the presentation of it has to be amazing. Your photos have to be cropped in a complimentary way. They have to showcase the item really, really well. Um, I would suggest adding different photos of the product in different angles, um, show the product um, used like in the wall of, of a living room. You want to make sure that your photos are pretty much amazing. Um, what happens is that even though you do have beautiful products, a beautiful product or an okay product could cost you a sale. If the photo is not the best, it will cost you a sale no matter how amazing your product is. So therefore, the presentation of it or the photos of it has to be really, really good. The first thing I notice about this photo is that it's, it gets cut off. You see how this is what people see in the search results. So right now it's getting cut off. And then when you click on it, the picture elongates, it's longer. So what I re would recommend is redoing your photos. Um, I don't recommend doing a frame, uh, uh, like a picture with a brown frame uh, with a background that's brown as well. It kind of like blends in. If you do it on a white wall, I think it will look better and it will showcase your product better. Um, I also suggest adding additional photos. I know that you added the photo for the back. It's not that pleasing, this photo is not that great. I will add additional photos um, showcasing the item. So the first photo is like the presentation of it, which is good. It's like the main photo of the product. And then I will have a photo of it in the living room. Then I will have the uh, another photo of it maybe on the side, maybe have a photo of it, you packaging the item before you ship it. Just stuff like that, but just having different photos. The more photos that you have, the more chances of that person possibly buying from you, the longer they stay at your store, the longer the click through rate and the long and the more possibility of possibly buying from you. But adding additional photos, um, I do recommend at least six to seven. Um, if you could do all 10, even better, you could do call to actions as well. So you could have a, te uh, um, a photo that says click below to learn more about this frame picture or click below to learn about our shipping policy or 
Um, did you know you get free shipping with this order? Whatever you want to do, but just adding a call to action, telling the customer to do something. Um, you got to treat Etsy like whoever comes to your store is their first time visiting. So therefore, by giving them guidance of, hey, did you know you could click below to learn more? It's a great way for them to click and visit your store. Another trick that you could do um, is you got a photo and you could say, favorite, favor this item and have like a little arrow pointing to the heart. The reason why you want to do that is that more people favor your items, the more people view it, the more people click and hopefully more people buy. But the more people favor the item, that sends a signal to XC's algorithm. And XC, what they do is they have a listing score. So whenever you upload a new for a new product, uh, it's neutral. That product doesn't have uh, a score to it yet. And XC uh, determines the score based on how many people interacted, how many people liked the item, how many people actually bought from you, et cetera, et cetera. So the more people engage with your listing, the more people like it, more people buy from you, that listing um, ranks higher in the search results. And that's why you see sometimes um, when people have a listing that ap appears in the first page of XC, but there's a lot of competition, you're like, how come their listing appears on the first page? But if I use the same tag, mine is burying the search results. It's because that particular listing got a lot of conversions or got a lot of likes, got a lot of engagement as soon as as soon as it was listed. So therefore, it becomes like a top contender for XE. So those type of listings always appear in the first or second page of XE versus listings that no one pay attention to. Maybe the picture wasn't that great, even though the product is. Um, those usually get buried in the search results. So it's just something to think about your photos. Not only do you have to do great photos for customers, you also have to do great photos for Etsy because how people react to your listings also determines the placement of your actual listing. So it's very, very important. Um, so I do recommend redoing your photos for sure. The second thing I want to talk about is um, SEO. So as you guys might know, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And it's basically just the way that search engine understands what your page is about. And there are some best practices that you do when you are practicing SEO in order for Google or Yahoo or Bing or even Etsy to know that this actual listing is for a wooden frame Canva. So the the, the SEO best practices are basically putting the main keyword. So if this is your main keyword, put in it in the beginning of your set of your title, because that's where it holds the most weight for SEO. Putting the same keyword in the beginning of your meta description. So the first 160 characters of your listing description is also the meta description. This is what people see when they search for your product on Google, it's like a little snippet. I recommend redoing your meta description at the current moment is not enticing. So you wanna make sure that not only does it include your main keyword, you also wanna make sure that's enticing. That way when somebody finds it in the search in the search results, whether it's XE or Google, they wanna go ahead and click. And this is your meta description right now. And it's basically, this information is pulled directly from here, from the first 155 characters. So you wanna make sure that your meta description is enticing, that's gonna make somebody wanna to click to learn more about this wooden frame Canva. So it's very, very important that you rewrite that. Now with the new changes that XC did back in October of 2018, your title has to be a little bit shorter because all of this gets truncated in the search results. They only see the beginning of your title. So with the new changes, and this is something that I used to do this way too, and I have to change my, I've been changing my titles. What you have to do is use the main keyword in the beginning of the sentence, and then maybe um, talk about a little bit more about the actual product, and that's it. Keep it nice, short, and simple. The reason why they don't want you stuffing keywords in your title is because a lot of customers get confused when they see so many keywords. So it has to be natural, for the customer when they're reading the title, but then it also has to go ahead and um, 
play the factor for SEO. So you're meeting two standards. You're meeting the algorithm standard and you're meeting the human standard. The human standard is having a title that's easy to read. The algorithm is having a title that has the main SEO keyword. That's basically it. That's what you're doing. Um, another thing that you want to do when you use the keywords is making sure that you're not using keywords that are over saturated, like too competitive. Right now you have keywords um, that are too competitive. So therefore, all these keywords here that are in red, you need to get rid of them. Um, so when you put love you, that's too, that's too of a generic keyword. Um, when you put um, child room, that's too, too generic. If you were to go to Etsy right now and you type in the word child room, you're going to see how many other people are using that tag right now. And there's over 176,000 listings. So therefore, that keyword is not really going to drive you any traffic. Um, if anything, it's gonna your listing is going to be buried. And the only way that your listing would rank for child room is that when you first upload it, your listing, um, I don't know how long they do this, but I'm, I'm assuming it's the first 30 days. But when you upload the listing, you get that neutral score. And if everybody engages with that listing, then your listing would appear like these people's listing in the first page. However, if you rarely got any engagement, then your listing is going to get drowned in the search result all the way down here. And that's where you are right now because, unfortunately, you didn't rank for that keyword. Now, you could go ahead and pay, um, you know, you could advertise using that keyword. However, you have to be a little bit careful when you use keywords because what you want to do is you want to make sure you identify who is your target audience. And the best way to do that is, one, by looking at your XC stats, looking at your Google Analytics. I so also have a video on how to connect your Etsy with Google Analytics, understand who is your audience, and then use long tail keywords to target your audience. Because right now, your your words are one, too generic, so therefore you're targeting anybody and everybody. Um, and you're not targeting people that are actually looking for frame canvas. So therefore, change all these keywords, change this one that doesn't have any data, and that's because no one's looking for this particular keywords. Um, and then these keywords also, these two right here, even that one, don't give you any traffic. As you can see, um, Love One Sign has barely any traffic. That's why it doesn't show anything here. Um, Love You More Sign only gets about 100 searches per month. I mean, if you want to leave it, you can. Um, I would just look at your keywords and see if you are getting found using this keyword. If you are, I would keep it. But if you see that you're not getting found with that keyword, I will remove it because you're just wasting a space when you could just do research and find a better keywords than these. So just keep in mind that you have to do research. You want to make sure that your keyword is not too competitive, also not too low. You want to find a keyword that has medium competition, that search volume every month is high, and that engagement every month is high because those are the ones that that means that people are looking for that, but there's not a lot of other people, a lot of competition. So therefore, you still have room to compete versus if you are trying to compete with 176,000 other people, that that's you know going to be really hard for you to win that. So redoing your keywords, um, just study up SEO, um, is very important, and I do recommend you redoing your um your SEO, making sure that once you have your new SEO, uh, making sure that you use it in the title, you use the keywords in your listing description, and you optimize your categories in your store with those tags as well. Now, the third thing I want to talk about is listing description. And everything goes hand in hand. So keep in mind that a photo is what, what make them want to click. The SEO is how they found you, and the listing description is how you close out the order. And the listing description should have everything and anything the customer should know about that particular listing. Um, at the current moment, I don't think you have a great listing description. Um, it's a little bit too short. So what I would include is maybe how to order. Remember, a lot of people don't know how to order online on Etsy. It's their first time visiting. Um, just assume that everyone is their first time. 
That way there's clear direction on how to order and that makes them feel more trustworthiness of your shop. They feel more comfortable and they'll go ahead and proceed with the order. But just, you know, just break it down into sections. Maybe say how to order, what's included, shipping policy, return policy, um, break it down into sections. I'll give you an idea. This is one of my listings here. And when you go inside the listing, I have it broken down into sections. So I have who I am, description, what's included, how to order, what you will receive, returns and refunds, and then I have a backlink to my homepage. This is the kind of stuff that you want. It's very clear. They understand exactly what they're getting. There's no confusion. And God forbid, if somebody was to open a case against your store, against your store, um, Exy will go ahead and cover your side and be by your side or protect you as an Exy seller because you were transparent with your policy. Um, so it's very important that you are transparent with everything and include anything and everything the customer should know about the listing description. Don't forget to optimize it with your SEO as well. It's very, very important. You didn't do it here in this listing, but if you want to rank higher in the search results, whenever people are searching for items, it's called a search, quer a search query. So whenever they're searching for stuff, because you optimize your listing with keywords, you will rank higher in the search results therefore driving more people to your Etsy shop. So just make sure that you optimize your Etsy listing completely. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the curation of your shop. And it's just the overall look of your shop. Um, you do have beautiful products. Um, my first thing is um, when people buy from Etsy, they want to know who they're buying from. It's very personable. XC is not Amazon or eBay. Then no one cares who they're buying from. X is the opposite. It's very, um, they want to know who they're buying from. They want to know your story, right? Your about me story. Um, so what I recommend is one, uploading a picture of yourself. Um, I recommend adding an about me section. Whether you want to just share how you got started, you don't, if you don't want to share a lot, you don't have to. Um, but if you want to just share how you got started, um, why it makes you, you know, passionate about what you do, etc. You have, you don't have to have necessarily pictures of yourself. Maybe you have a picture of your working station or of your office, etc. Stuff like that. One, I will have a picture, like I said, of yourself here. Um, I will add shop announcements periodically that helps um, people know that you are, you know, active in your store. Um, making sure your photos look really good. Um, what makes you different than everybody else that sells similar items, right? You want to stand out. You want to create a brand as well. You want to make sure that if you want to scale your business to a six-figure business, not only do you have to add more products to your store, you have to make sure that you have branding um, all put together. If you don't know, um, I would recommend studying up branding 101. There's a lot of ebooks, there's a lot of videos online, a lot of articles online that you can find. But basically, branding is is if I saw this picture on the on the search results, and I saw this picture and I saw this one, I would say, oh, that's from that store. Right now, it looks like it's from four like these six pictures here look like they're from different stores. They don't look like they're from the same store. That's because you're not using the same colors, the same size for the photos. Everything looks different. Um, I will also recommend adding a, um, a cover. If you were to look up the most prominent stores, they have covers. In the covers, they, are, they have their hours of operation. They have their website, maybe social media handles, etc. But it just makes you look nicer. Fill up the store as much as you can. Um, you have great products. I think that for the overall, you would just need to study a little bit more about SEO, um, making sure your photos are amazing, um, writing a, a better listing description, and finally curating your shop so it could be cohesive, so it could look like a brand, um, and taking it to the next level with that. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video, this critique. If I miss anything about this critique and you guys have any suggestion, leave them below. I'm trying to create a sense of community where we all come together and we help each other out. So 
make sure that you leave a comment below. And don't forget that if this is your first time visiting, make sure that you click on that subscribe button. That way you can stay updated with my latest XE videos. Thank you guys for watching.